This program is sponsored by the partners and friends of Redeemer's Voice Media. Bible says in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 15 verse number 22 it says so Samuel said has the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifice as in obeying the voice of the Lord behold to obey is better than sacrifice and to pay attention or to heed than the fat of rams. Verse 23, for rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. And stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he also has rejected you from being the king. Verse 34, Then Samuel went to Ramah, and the Saul went up to his house at Gibeah of Saul. And Samuel went no more to see Saul until the day of his death. Nevertheless, Samuel mourned for Saul and the Lord regretted, cycled that word, regretted that he had made Saul king over Israel. Precious Father, we thank you. We do exalt you this day for giving us opportunity to be in your presence. Lord, I bring all those who are under the sound of my voice into the attention of thy word. And by the Holy Spirit, may you release the spirit of conviction and inspiration into our hearts. The Lord God, by the entrance of this word, we may be able to act on this word to help us walk acceptable and pleasing unto thee. We give you honor and praise as we dedicate this week unto you once again and all those who are joining us online and those who have joined us uh, face to face, Lord God, may your, your power and your favor be evident in their lives. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody shouted, Amen. Obedience, the key to spiritual heritage. The scripture we have read gives us a classic example of the impact of either obedience or disobedience. There is consequences either way. If you walk in obedience to God, good things happen. You walk in rebellion and disobedience, bad things happen. The Bible talks about Saul, who if you read his history, God picked from a very unknown place. He was a son of Kish, who was a donkey keeper. And so all his life, Saul was busy doing his father's business. But God's divine hand reached out and picked him from that state and made him a king. And God was expecting so much from him because Israel had cried out. They needed a king like uh, all other nations around them. And so God said to Samuel, because they have wanted to have a king, so give them a king. And God chose a man for him, for them. You read in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 9, it is God who spoke to Samuel and said to him prior to even meeting with Saul, God said to him that I am sending you a man. And when he met him, he realized that this is the man and he prophesied over him and anointed him to be king over Israel. 
And God had a lot of plans concerning him. And on this occasion, we see a lot of mistakes of Saul. And all of them emanated from being self-willed and disobedient and rebellious and arrogant. Bible says in verse 1 of that book of 1 Samuel chapter, chapter 15, the Lord sent me to anoint you king over his people over the Israel. Now therefore, heed the voice of the words of the Lord. Listen to the words of the voice of the Lord. These are the words of Samuel speaking to Saul. And it gives him very stern, clear instructions on how he was going to be successful. The Bible says, the Lord sent me to anoint you king. It is the Lord who sent him to anoint him king over Israel. And the instruction was simple. Heed the voice of the words of the Lord. Listen to instructions from God. Obey that which he is telling you to do. And the Bible says, Thus says the Lord, verse 2, of hosts, I will punish Amalek for what he did to Israel. How he ambushed him on the way when he came up from Egypt. Verse 3, now go and attack Amalek and utterly destroy. Somebody shout, utterly destroy. Utterly destroy all that they have. Do not spare them. This is the words of God, the instruction to Saul. As you go, this is what is expected of you. Utterly destroy all that they have. Do not spare any of them. But kill both man and woman, infant and nursing child, oxen and sheep, camel and donkey. Verse number four. So Saul gathered the people together and numbered them in Talaim, 200,000 foot soldiers and 10,000 men of Judah. And Saul came to a city of Amalek and lay in wait in the valley. And Saul attacked the Amalekites from Havilah all the way to Shur, which is east of Egypt. Verse 8. He also took Agag. What did God say? Destroy. Utterly destroy. Spare nothing. But the Bible says he took Agag king of the Malachites alive. And he utterly destroyed all the people with the edge of the sword. Verse 9. But Saul and the people spared Agag and the best of the sheep, the oxen, the fatlings, the lambs, and all that was good and were unwilling, cycle that word, unwilling to utterly destroy them. But everything despised and worthless, that they utterly destroyed. Now, the word of the Lord came to Samuel saying, I greatly regret. Now, imagine God regretting. I greatly regret that I have set up Saul as king. For he has turned back from following me. And has not performed my commandments. And it grieved Samuel. And he cried out to the Lord the whole night. It grieved 
God. God regretted. Obedience is basically paying attention and acting according to the instructions given. Obedience is one very important key for you to access the unlimited blessing and favor of God. Many people have missed it. And if you go throughout the scriptures from the book of Genesis chapter number 2, number 3, you can see how disobedience dislodged people from their inheritance. Men have lost their positions, their dominion. They have lost their dignity. Men have lost their relationship with God because of the spirit of disobedience and arrogance and the spirit of rebellion. We are suffering today as human beings on the face of the earth on the basis of disobedience. If Adam and Eve would have obeyed the voice of God, we wouldn't be where we are today. The earth would not be experiencing what it is. So obedience is a very important component in our walk with God and in serving our God. Because your obedience opens you to the realms of God's goodness. It is this obedience that makes the heart of God to be happy with his people. When a people obey God, God releases his best. When a people disobey God, then they attract the wrath of God. Whether it be in the Old Testament or in the New Testament, disobedience still plays a major, role, a major role in either destroying your lives or messing you up. Saul was given an opportunity. He was given instructions by Samuel. The instruction was simple. Heed the voice of the words of God. Listen carefully to what he has said to you. If you be able to do this because you are going to avenge the heart of God. You are going to avenge the Amalekites because God had said one day, one day he will repay them for, the, for fighting the children of Israel when they were coming from bondage. When they were vulnerable. When they were unarmed. The Amalekites attacked them. And God says, I will never allow them to continue like that. And God said to Saul, you are the vessel I'm going to use to utterly destroy Amalek. You are going to make sure that everything from their king up to their little children, everything, including their property and wealth, you will take nothing. So, when Saul and his army, he took a big army, when they went there, the Bible says, they didn't do as God said it. And it displeased God. It made God feel very unhappy. The Bible says God regretted. Now, it is important for you to know that God can regret. However much he has loved us. People don't go to hell because they were never serving God. They go to hell because they disobeyed God. They refused to believe who he is. That's why verse 35, the Bible says that the Lord regretted that he had made Saul king. When God gives us responsibilities, 
He is watching us. He desires that we fulfill his mandates. And he wants us to walk in obedience if we want to enjoy the best of the land. Isaiah chapter 1, the Bible says, If you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. God regretted. Obedience is to comply to a given order or a command. How do you comply to the word of God? Obedience is submission or a yielding wholeheartedly to his authority. The Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 6 verse 16 it talks about submission, yielding. It says do you not know that to whom you present yourself slaves to obey you are that one's slaves whoever you yield yourself you submit yourself to if you yield then you become bound to that submission you become a slave and he says whom you he says to whom you present yourself slaves to obey, you are that one's slave. Whom you obey, whether of sin leading to death, or of obedience leading to righteousness. It is important for you to know that there is no middle space. It's either you are submitted or yielding to God, or yielding to something else. There is no way you can say you are not yielding to anything. Verse 17, the Bible says, But God be thanked that though you are slaves of sin, yet you obeyed from the heart. So obedience is from the heart. You obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine to which you were delivered. Verse 18, and having been set free from sin, you became slaves of righteousness. Because you have yielded yourself and obeyed the doctrine of salvation. You obeyed the word of the Lord that he sent to you. And by reason of that obedience, you have became, become a slave to righteousness. You have yielded yourself to be the Lord's and to walk in this imputed righteousness that he has given unto us. So, when you are a slave, it simply means you can not walk in double standards. You're not expected today to be a slave of a neighbor and another person and another person. To whom you yield yourself and you obey, you become a slave of that. Now that we are children of the living God, we need to know that it is the will of God for you to fully yield to him. If it is prayer, pray. If it is seeking God, seek God. If it is giving, give. If because you are not your own. You don't make your own decisions. You allow the Lord to guide and to lead you because the footsteps of a righteous man are ordered by God. You obey what he has said to you. If we are going to reap the best that he has in store for us, you have to wholly, wholeheartedly submit and yield to obedience. Somebody say amen. Obedience is a basic virtue and an essential component in your Christian walk with God. It is an essential virtue. If you are going to walk effectively because God will bless you 
and will continue lifting you because of your position that you have taken as a slave of the Lord. Somebody shout amen. Samuel spoke to Saul and he said, listen to these instructions. But when Samuel came, Saul still justified his actions. Bible says, verse 12, so when Samuel rose early in the morning to meet Saul, it was told Samuel, saying, Saul went to Carmel, and indeed, he has gone there to set up a monument for himself. What makes people walk in disobedience is because of self-conceit, selfishness, self grantees self-justification. They know that they have done wrong, but they justify what they have done. So the man went to Rama to go and um, uh, he went to Carmel to go and build for himself a huge monument out of the proceeds of disobedience. Out of the proceeds of disobedience, he went and built himself a monument so that he feels good. That out of this that I took from Amalek and from Agag, I am now building myself. He was not about the kingdom of God. He was not valuing the instructions of God. He was not looking at the impact and the effect of what he was doing. So when Samuel came, verse number 13, Samuel went to Saul. He followed him arm to Carmel. Samuel went to Saul and the Saul said to him, Blessed are you of the Lord. I have performed the commandments of the Lord. Praise the Lord, Bishop. Everything that you told us to do, we have done. Bless the Lord. Whatever you said, we have done. Verse 15, verse 14, then the Bible says, Samuel said to him, What then is this bleating of the sheep in my ears? And the lowing of the oxen which I hear. What is it that you have hidden in your life that is bleating? Remember, sin will surely find you out. Disobedience will surely find you out one day. What do you do behind the scenes? God will make it be seen on the rooftops. The reason is, the eyes of the Lord are watching every one of us. And whatever we are hiding, it will betray us. Samuel said to him, what is this bleating? Ask yourself, what is this that is bleating in my life? I was supposed to be doing A, B, C. Why didn't I do it? I was, God spoke to me, gave me an assignment to go and do one, two, three. And you know that this thing is God who sent you. But rebellion has stood against it. And you are saying, no, after all, even if I don't do it, somebody else will do it. Or I can even just tell God he understands. And every time we say God understands. What is this that is bleeding? What is this that you are hiding in your life? What is this that you are doing that you know is not justifiable? Just justifiable by the will and the purposes of God. But you are trying to close it yourself. To justify yourself. If we are going to enjoy that which God has prepared for us. We must be willing. He says we have to be willing out of our hearts. That's why the Bible says where we read in verse number 9. But Saul and his people spared Agag. And the best of the sheep, the oxen, the fatlings, the lambs, and all that was good. And they were 
not willing. They were unwilling. They were unwilling to utterly destroy what God had commanded them to destroy. Many of us would want to give a certain portion to our God, but another portion we are unwilling to give up. There is an area in your life if you can examine your heart there is an area in your life that you are unwilling to let go. I am not willing to obey this area. I am unwilling to do that. I can't go beyond this. I can only give towards this and up to this. And the rest you can keep. Now listen. The next statement is amazing. It says, but everything despised and worthless that they utterly destroyed. They categorized what must be destroyed and what should not be destroyed. Same in our time. We categorize how far we can serve God and how far we cannot. We categorize how much time we can spend with God and how much we cannot. And most of the time, we would rather give to God what is worthless and despised. We can only obey selectively. In this kingdom, you can't obey selectively. You need to be willing to go all the way or no way. They selectively obeyed what to do. The rest they kept for themselves. Selfishness. When self is in control, obedience suffers loss. Because it is self that makes many people not to do what God has called them to do. It is self that makes many people not to go where God wants them to go. It is self that makes many people not to do or to give to God what he has said, give it to me. We can make vows and never fulfill them because of self. Bible says they were unwilling. May God break every unwillingness from the hearts of believers so that we be willing. It is the willingness that also becomes the highway of your obedience. When your heart is willing, you'll be, you'll be ready to do anything that God calls you to do. These people were unwilling to utterly destroy him. And because of that, a very classic statement came from the mouth of the servant of God. Verse 17. So Samuel said, when you were little in your own eyes, were you not head of the tribes of Israel? And did not the Lord anoint you king over Israel? When you were little, when you are little, when you are still struggling, when you are still hustling, you are, will, you are willing to do anything for God, evangelism. You are willing to spend overnight in the house of God. Willing to do anything, sweep the house of God. You are willing to be there because you are little in your eyes. And during the times that you are little, the Lord anointed you. You operated in a certain level of anointing. The Bible says, when you were little in your own eyes, were you not head of the, the tribes of Israel? And did not the Lord anoint you king over Israel? The anointing was evident. Verse 18. 
Now the Lord sent you on a mission. And he said go and utterly destroy the sinners. The Amalekites. And fight against them. Until they are all consumed. Verse 19. Why then did you not obey the voice of the Lord? Why did, they, did you not obey the voice of God? Why did you swoop down on the spoil and do evil in the sight of the Lord? Why? Why? Is it because God can't bless you? Is it because this God can't lift you? When you were little, he did something for you. He lifted you from your father's house. When you had nothing, God still saw you and picked you up, elevated you, and placed you in a seat of honor. Now you are sitting in a high place. You feel now good. You have a name. You have a place. You have resources. You have a command. You have authority. Now you can disobey God. Listen, many times the devil will not... Want you to disobey when you are still strong, when you are still little. But when you begin to get knowledge, strength, wisdom, wealth, then the devil begins to whisper to you, "Don't go to church." After all, we are pastor. Kuna kitu na kumbianga. You know what is it that he'll tell you that you don't know? After all, you are able to read the Bibles yourself. I mean, what 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 is the what is there in the church anymore? These are things that the enemy is using today to destroy many believers. Every time you question the authenticity of the word of God, anytime you put the word of God on your own test, anytime you begin to query whether that is the truth or not the truth, when you put arguments upon the word of God and debates, then you will easily get away. The devil will justify whatever you're saying. And there are so many. You look at the social media debates about the gospel. Debates about the truth. Debates about this or that. It's because the enemy is releasing platforms in the lives of many believers today. To query God. Why then did you not obey the, wo the voice of the Lord? Why didn't you not obey the voice of the Lord? When God saw you small, he has been lifting, he's opened a door, you got a job. You began with well and you are tithing, you are in the church, you are giving to us projects, you are giving to us helping the needy and all those kind of things. You are willing to go for missions. But now, it has come a time when now you have the ability, you can't do it. The reason is, you are now feeling, Verse 20. And Saul said to Samuel, But I have obeyed the voice of the Lord. And gone to the mission on which the Lord sent me and brought back Agag king of Amalek I have utterly destroyed the Amalekites <laughs> I, mean, I have brought Agag I have destroyed them that's not what God said and the Bible says that God was so angry God was so angry the man of God said in verse 22, and Samuel said, has the Lord, has the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices? Because verse 21, he was justifying why the people carried the fatlings and all those things. Verse 21, he said, the people have, give, have brought it so that we can offer sacrifices. But the people took of the plunder, sheep and oxen, best of the things which should have been utterly destroyed to sacrifice to the Lord, your God in Gilgal. When we took those things, 
we were looking at giving it to the Lord. God didn't need, require them. That's not what God wanted of them. There's something that God wanted, obedience. Look at somebody and tell them obedience is key. It's not money, it's not silver. It's not anything else, obedience. That is the basis upon which God will bless you. Obedience. It is the foundation upon which your heritage is built. It is built on obedience. Your salvation is not just by the way. Your salvation is a product of obeying the doctrine that you had. Obeying the word of the Lord. Acknowledging that Jesus, the Son of God, died on the cross for you. It is the same that will take us to the next level. Obedience. Somebody shout obedience. Obedience. Hallelujah. Let's continue. Verse 22. The Bible says in verse number 22. Samuel said, has the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to pay attention to the word of God, to heed his instruction than the fat of rams. It doesn't matter how much you are bringing. The question is, where is this from? Is it a product of disobedience? Or is it on the platform of God's blessing and truth? I remember one time we, when I was still in religion, uh, I came to church. Actually, I had gotten born again and uh, in 1986, we were in our church, mother's house, mother's church. And we know, I knew when I was in Nairobi, I knew of a lady who was actually living a promiscuous prostitute. And she had a lot of money, proceeds of prostitution. And she came to, uh, to the church in December, around Christmas, she brought a lot of money to the church as an offering. And the pastor stood up and he said, Natamani tungelikuwa na watoto wazuri katika kijiji hiki kama huyu dada. Ambao wanakuja kubariki kanisa na pesa mzuri na mnahi. And they really prayed for her. I felt bad because I knew what she was doing in Nairobi. I knew what she was doing. And uh, nobody talked to her about walking upright before God. And so they praised her. And she gave money to the church. And I said, is this what we ought to be doing as a, be a people of God? The proceeds of wickedness. We bring it to the altar. Thank God the sacrifice will be the, the altar may may sanctify the, the, the sacrifice but the soul is more important than money the soul of that person I know people who will bring a lot of money to a church regardless of where they have brought it from they are murdered people they have killed they have made sure that the poor have been trampled underfoot and they bring proceeds of corruption to the church and when they bring that we applaud them and we, we say this is a blessed man. This is yet at the back of our mind we know that this money cannot have come just from a straight life. This man must be corrupt, must be a murderer, must be, I mean, enjoying what the widow should have been enjoying. And we say it's okay. We need to know to differentiate what is good and what is bad you're quiet on me today we have obeyed the Lord 
We have brought these things so that the name of the Lord may be glorified. Whatever we have done is for the sacrifice. God says it is better to obey than to sacrifice. Walk uprightly, walk righteously before me. And do what is right. Be willing to serve the Lord. And all these other things, the Lord is able to add them to you. The Lord is not interested in how much we give. Even if we are giving it in disobedience. If we are giving because of corruption and all these other things. The Lord is not happy. What God is interested is your soul. He is interested in you going to heaven than in you bringing sacrifices of evil to his altar. Somebody say amen. Obedience is better than sacrifice. And he says rebellion is like the sin of witchcraft. Glory to God. Will you obey the Lord? Will you walk in obedience? There are things that are bleeding in our lives, in our homes, things that are making us lose face in the eyes of God. It doesn't mean that God wouldn't bless you. Zacchaeus was a wicked man, he had the proceeds of unrighteousness, corruption. Bible says when Jesus saw Zacchaeus up, number one, Jesus saw the heart, the willingness of Zacchaeus because of the action that he took. He was a short man. He had run ahead and climbed a sycamore tree because he wanted to see Jesus. His heart was for God. That's the first place, not the wealth, the heart wanted God and when Jesus saw him he said Zacchaeus come down we are going with you to your house and the moment Jesus stepped in the house of Zacchaeus the Bible says the first thing that Zacchaeus did he says Lord if I have stolen that means he had he knew that whatever it was it was not a right proceeds he said, I am willing to give this to the poor. I am ready to give even four times to the poor. Why? Because I want life more than wealth. He said, look, I give half of my goods to the poor. Half. And if I have taken anything from anyone by false accusation, I restore back to him fourfold. Hmm. Now what did Jesus say? Jesus said to him, Today, everybody shout today. Today salvation has come to this house because he also is a son of Abraham. The reason is his submission to the Lord and the release of the proceeds of evil and wickedness. He was willing to release everything. Give to the poor. And give return to those people he stole from. Fourfold. Then Jesus said now. This is where salvation begins. When somebody is not held. By anything that is not good. He is willing to let go. And I pray that by the grace of God, any bleeding things in your life, in your home, in your family, because the wealth of Zacchaeus was bleating, was shouting loud. And he said, I let go because I need God more than these things. This is where we need to go. Lord, I submit and I surrender to you. Stand up on your feet. I surrender to you. Lord God, that you may do with me that which you will. And if there be any disobedience, I want you to break every disobedience. Lift up your hands and just 
Repent of any rebellion, arrogance, disobedience. And allow the Holy Spirit to enable you walk uprightly before him. Precious Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you for speaking to us this afternoon. That we desire that we be pure in, our, in your sight. Clean in our hearts. To serve you with obedience. And if there be any disobedience, arrogance, or any bleating thing in the hearts of your children, Lord, this afternoon I pray, may you heal, may you remove it, help us as we repent and turn away from every wickedness. The Lord God, we may manifest your glory and your power and step into the heritage that you have prepared for each one of us. I thank you, blessed Father. May you release healing and restoration and bless your children as we are willing to serve you in Jesus' name. Amen. When visiting Kisumu City, join Bishop Mark Kigohi at Jesus Celebration Center next to the Kisumu National Polytechnic for our Grace Hour and Sunday services. For more information, visit us online. We thank the partners and friends of Redeemer's Voice Media for making this program possible.